Hi, my name is Jessica Harris, and I am by avocation a food historian, but I am by love a collector of postcards. In the middle of the pandemic in 2020, I was asked by the Martha's Vineyard Museum to look at their extensive collection of postcards and select a few that spoke to me about the island and its people and its history. Those few cards have resulted in a postcard show at the museum, simply entitled, Wish You Were Here. Some of the cards are humorous. Some of the cards are poignant. Some of the cards talk about an island that is past and long, long gone, never to return. But all of the cards, no matter what they show, no matter what they talk about, no matter who is depicted, are little pasteboard patches of memory. Memories of people who vacationed on the island, memories of people who lived on the island, memories of people who loved the island as I do. And so we titled it, Wish You Were Here. Wish You Were Here is doubly meaningful because it can come with an exclamation mark or a question mark. Wish you were here, or wish you were here. And so, let me show you a few of my island cards in Wish You Were Here. The opening card in the exhibit is an old one. I'm not sure of the exact dates because dating postcards accurately is a problematic issue, as any collector of cards can tell you. But this is a card of the U.S. Marine Hospital in Vineyard Haven, Mass. It's the former Marine Hospital that is today the Martha's Vineyard Museum. So what more fitting card with which to begin the show than a card that shows us exactly where we are, but more importantly, what was where we are before we are here. So we have a card that tells us about place. The interesting thing about this card for me is that in the top, it says having a fine time. And you got to wonder what kind of fine time would the sender of this card be having at a Marine hospital? Anyhow, that's part of the fun of postcards. A bird's eye view from Mount Aldworth, Vineyard Haven, Mass. Well, first of all, who knew it was called Mount Aldworth? Those are the kinds of things you can find on cards when you look closely. And this view is actually, I think, the view that you would get out of the front windows of the museum. So you see to the left what would be Vineyard Haven Harbor, and you see how bucolic it is, grazing cows and things that look like country roads. An amazing look back into the past, because this is just the vineyard in the early part of the 20th century. I love this card because it's, it's what first of all, it's what we call a photo card. It's actually made from a real photograph, and it is the... A.S. Andrews Tonsorial Parlor in Vineyard Haven. But it has such a cosmopolitan feel. It doesn't really seem as though it's the vineyard. I mean, you've got the aspidistra and you've got the old barber chairs. But what I also love is that in the right-hand side of the image, you'll see the shelving with all of the shaving mugs. So the gentleman who came to the tonsorial parlor must have brought and left their own shaving mugs there so that they could be shaved with their own mugs. You see the deeply mustachioed gentlemen who are the barbers in question, and of course the two patrons of the tonsorial parlor. 
And this card, I believe, was mailed in 1917 and tells us a little bit more about this island we so love. Anybody who's been following the news on the vineyard recently knows that something about that old stone bank is that old stone bank. Um, The roof, the roof, the roof, which is, thank God, not on fire. But here in this postcard, it's covered in snow. So we're looking at the end of Main Street in Vineyard Haven, I do believe, and it's an interesting card because heavy snow is a relative rarity on the vineyard because of the salt air. But here we've got another photo postcard, but one that shows somebody shoveling snow the old-fashioned way, a lot of elbow grease, a lot of back work, and one of those snow shovels that makes that scraping, scratching sound. And certainly old-fashioned snow shoveling was no joke. This is a card that's basically a rebus, in a way. Oak Bluffs. (laughs) And I love it because it reminds us all of the correct pronunciation of the town on the island where I live. I have in my house on the vineyard a print of a painting done by an island artist of the ferry coming into the island. And there are people leaning out of it saying, Here we come into Oaks Bluff, into Oak Bluffs, into Oaks Bluff, into Bluff. And somebody finally says, just call it OB. So if they had this card, they'd know that OB is Oak Bluffs. The Cottage City Band, or the band Cottage City, Massachusetts. This real photo card was actually copyrighted in 1904, so it's an early one. It was when what is now Oak Bluffs was still called Cottage City. It's interesting, first of all, because you can see the band members. They're sort of relaxed. You've got a few people watching them, and you've got some children in the foreground. You can see that it was copywritten by a Mr. Davenport, E.S. Davenport, and it gives a sense of the kind of activity that went on in Cottage City back then. But now one of the things that I find interesting also is that if you read the writing on the front of the card, and the fact that the writing on the front of the card tells us something about the card's date, is that someone is asking for money. Kindly send me the milk bill for last month. We are sleeping under two blankets, and heretofore, all is well as usual, including the gazebo. And it's from, I think, Uncle or Unc. So we've got a note, a notice, and a request. I don't know if it's for the bill or for the money for the bill, but it's an interesting look at early 20th century Cottage City. Well, anyone who knows the island knows that we have had a long and tortured relationship with our ferry boats over the years. These are the old paddle wheel steamers that used to bring the sinners and the saints to frolic, the sinners to frolic at Tivoli, the sanctified to worship at the Methodist and the Baptist tabernacles. And I suspect that some folks probably did both. This is a card from about 1908, and what's interesting is that it was the New Bedford Martha's Vineyard Nantucket Steamboat Company. It wasn't a steamship company, but we see the pier, and this is the Oak Bluffs Pier. So we can see the the tall chimneys on the steamboats, and we can see the paddle wheel on the side of the one that is actually at the pier and the other one behind it coming in. Sunset Lake, and this is an early card, but it's a card that reflects the change. It says Cottage City, Mass., now Oak Bluffs. So the postcard manufacturers were nimble. They knew how to pivot and pirouette when things changed on them. Now, I happen to like this card for memory as much as for what it portrays, which is the lake at the entrance to Oak Bluffs. 
But I remember Sunset Lake in my childhood had paddle boats and you could rent the paddle boat and go paddling around on the lake, which isn't all that big for a while. I also remember as a child going down to Sunset Lake with, you know, stale bread from the house to feed the swans that used to be on Sunset Lake. And the thing that always would amaze me was while the swans were so beautiful above water, they had these sort of strange web, black webbed feet that were paddling furiously underneath the water. And I'm sure that's a metaphor for any number of things in our lives these days. Sunset Lake has always been a big part of my Oak Bluff. The bathing beach at Oak Bluff's Mass and the Pyramid. Well, if you look, you begin to get a feeling for just what Oak Bluff's was. I mean, this was a massive resort. This was a massive resort. All of those um, sort of little things that almost look like a train in the midground of the card are changing rooms. And they're changing rooms where people would come and change out of their, you know, Victorian garb into their bathing costumes and go down through. You can see the walkway and the steps down, or they'd get to the jetties and sit on the wooden jetties on the beach. So the beaches were always a lure. If you look in the background, you can see the old Seaview Hotel at the foot of Tuckernuck Avenue. And that Seaview Hotel is at the corner of Tuckernuck. And where the Seaview is in the foreground of the picture, in the background of the picture, would be today's Inkwell. The interesting thing is that you see all of these people and while today Oak Bluffs is known for its African-American inhabitants and as being an African-American summer special spot, it wasn't back then. Very interesting. Now, the title of the card is Bathing Beach at Oak Bluffs, Massachusetts, and then in quotation marks, The Pyramid. Can you spot the pyramid? You have to look very closely in the lower left of the car, and you will see some swimmers who have made a pyramid. I didn't select a lot of cars with images of people simply because I wanted to talk about the island more than I wanted to talk about individuals. But Uncle Nathan. I could not have missed. Nathan Athern apparently was an island character. Born blind from birth, he sold popcorn and sweets around the arcade on Circuit Avenue. And if you look at his face and you just want to give him a hug and certainly buy some popcorn from him, Uncle Nathan was one of the local denizens that merited his own postcard at the turn of the 20th century. I don't remember this card, but I do remember this house. When my parents and I moved to the vineyard in the mid to late 1950s, everyone would talk about the Emily Post House, the Emily Post House, the Emily Post House. And so at some point we got in the car, drove into Edgartown to look for the Emily Post House, which we did find. Emily Post was Mrs. Price Post, and I suspect since she was the arbiter of all things proper, that she would have been less than amused by the fact that her house appeared on a postcard, but equally less than amused at the incredible day glow pinks and blues of the hollyhocks and the flowers in this I think hand-tinted card, but it's a lovely reminder of the gentility, if you will, of Edgartown past. The ivy-covered public library in Edgartown is no longer the public library. It's been transformed into the Carnegie. And for some reason, the ivy is gone. 
but it does give a sense of how things on the island morph and change, and yet in so many, many ways stay the same. The French would say, plus ça change, plus ça reste la même chose. The more things change, the more they stay the same. It's hard to believe that this card of Norton's Pier in Edgartown is actually Dock Street. But if you look very, very carefully and you kind of stare off into the horizon in the direction of Chappaquiddick, which would be in the background on the right, you begin to see what was before. Eliminate the seafood shanties. Eliminate the souvenir shops. And you get the feeling of the working wharf that existed before all of the other things came into being. This card shows Captain Tilton. Tilton is an old island name, and I'm sure if you've been on the island for more than two minutes, you've seen those trucks saying Tilton Tents. So an old island name. But here Captain Tilton is driving what seems to be a sulky at the 1906 County Fair. The Martha's Vineyard Ag Fair has been an island fixture for more than 150 years. So in 1906, it had been around for a while even then. So I'm not sure what Captain Tilton is doing, but if he was racing, I hope he won. Factory Bridge, West Tisbury, Mass. I had to look at this card long and hard before I realized, oh my goodness, I know exactly where that is. Factory Bridge is where you come off of the West Tisbury Edgartown Road into the road that would lead you to the Grange Hall. Now, I didn't know there had been a factory there. I didn't realize that it was actually a bridge over what must have been at some point a mill pond because there's water on both sides, which I'm not sure there is now. But it was apparently the Satinette factory. And it's a reminder of the industry that was on the island in times past. Uh, if you look, you can see the the three levels of the the factory. You can see the windows that must have been able to be opened to pull things in and out. You get a sense of real industry, real work, real workmanship. Um, the Surrey crossing the bridge dates the card to the early part of the 20th century. And I believe if it wasn't taken or copywritten in 1911, it was perhaps mailed in 1911. Right there at the end of the Edgartown West Tisbury Road is my absolutely, to paraphrase Eloise of the Plaza fame, my mostest favorite sign on the entire island. And that is the handwritten sign that said Turtle Crossing. Now, we're still in West Tisbury, and this is the route that I take, or used to take, every Saturday or Wednesday to get to the farmer's market when it was at the Grange Hall. Now, I'm not really sure why this house in the card was called the Daniel Webster house. But the people on the island clearly knew something I don't. I was amazed to see how little the house had changed. That's still the house. It's still right there at the turn, and it still looks pretty much exactly as it does on the card. The interesting thing about Daniel Webster is that the famous New England politician and author did visit the island and did write about it. So that connection could be very, very real and just needs to be investigated. But that's one of the thrills of postcards is that if you lean into them, if you let them talk to you, if you interrogate them, you can come up with all sorts of inroads into history. Okay, I have to admit to a fondness for Nancy Luce and her pet chickens. 
Now, I'm not sure if it's because she was a spinster woman, sort of like myself, <laughs> although I don't have pet chickens, or if she just has that sort of dour and unbelievably sad look. I mean, it's not necessarily that she was sad, but the the long oval of her face and the way she is holding on to her two pet chickens, probably to keep them from escaping, but almost as though she were holding on to them for security, all appeal. Nancy Luce was one of the first island-created celebrities, and there are several postcard images of her with her chickens and her pet cow. We see the pet cow in the other one. Now, I'm not sure if the cow is posed in such a way or actually was a three-legged cow, but some people and some articles suggest that she even had a three-legged cow. But Nancy Luce, along with Nathan, were two of the island celebrities, if you will. By the way, the cow's name was Red Cannon. Nancy Luce had a shop in her home. She sold eggs and small books that she wrote, so she was an author as well, yet another point of intersection. The card is mislabeled. It's labeled Oak Bluffs, although Luce lived in West Tisbury. I'm a non-driver, and so I don't get up island nearly as much as I might like. But when I do get up island, there are several points along the road where I just start humming to myself, sheep may safely graze. Because I think that if Bach <laughs> knew the island, he would definitely appreciate the up island roads where you see on either side the glorious stone fences, the rolling green moors, and the sheep grazing. Chilmark has always been a small spot that if you blink twice, you could drive through and not know you'd been through. But in 1955, on this card, it looks like a veritable metropolis. <laughs> The gas station with cars, the two buildings with shops, uh, it seems to be a bustling little point. I'm not sure that's the case, but it looks so on cards, and sometimes cards can fool us that way as well. If we look closer, we can probably see that one of those buildings may have morphed into the Chilmark store, and I'm not sure where the other things are, but look closely because you never know. And the card is simply entitled, The Center, Chilmark Mass. Menemsha is perhaps the one of the most photographed spots on the island. But this card is fascinating because it's not a photograph. It's a reproduction of a painting, and the painting is by the noted African-American artist and vineyard resident, Lois Maylou Jones. Now, today her pictures of island scenes are highly sought after by collectors and are auctioned at galleries at prices in the fives and six figures. But then... Lois Maylou Jones would sell her art out of the old Sculpin Gallery in Edgartown. And I know that my mother bought at least one piece from her there that I still have. And on the back, if you turn it over, it will tell you that the purchase price was $600. So you never know who you're buying when you're buying art on the island. Uh, you might be buying someone who will turn out to be an artist of incredible note, less than a half a century later. Today, many people journey to Menemsha to have a lobster dinner and to catch the sunset. And indeed, the sunsets at the fishing village, the working fishing village, are often remarkable. However, the vivid pinks and greens of this hand-tinted scene are probably a little over the top for the reality 
of what a Manemsha sunset really is. But if you look closely, you can see the working ships, the lobster signs, and there are probably even a few lobster pots lurking somewhere. So we've got our view of one of the very special spots on the island. When my family and I arrived on the island in the mid-1950s, what is today called Aquina was then known as Gay Head. Now, Gay Head has always been a major attraction of the island. The multicolored cliffs are extraordinary, and there are cards of them coming up. What I didn't know was Aquina had its own dock for excursion vessels. And more often than not, tourists were met at the dock by ox carts. And ox carts were a major means of transportation at that end of the island back then. Now, the other interesting thing about this card is that while Aquina is called Gay Head, that's not necessarily notable. But the card is captioned, seen at Gay Head, Oak Bluffs, Massachusetts. Oak Bluffs was the name that folks knew, and so the card makers were determined to get that on the card, even though it was the other end of the island. The cliffs at Gay Head, now Aquina, as I remember them, were more vividly hued than they are today. There were reds and terracottas and oranges and a vein of black that ran through, and even a little green, if I recall correctly. They were extraordinary. They still are. Now, it may seem unbelievable to today's visitors, but the descent of the cliffs at Gay Head, now definitely verboten, were part of the fun of being there well into the 20th century. I can actually recall going down the cliffs with my grandmother. And clay from the cliffs was sold as souvenirs in little bottles with the levels and the layers of color clearly delineated within the bottles. And there were ashtrays made. Who buys ashtrays nowadays? There were little items made from the clay that were also sold. Those are all things of the past and highly collectible if they can be found. The cliffs can no longer be descended on foot, but the beauty and the majesty of the cliffs still very much there. This card is the most recent of the cards in this selection that I have made. The back of the card reads, Chief Medicine Man Napoleon Madison of the Gay Head Indians Wampanoag Tribe. Now, the thing that was so amazing to me, and this is a card that I actually had in my own collection, is that Napoleon Madison also ran the souvenir stand and the eatery at the top of the cliffs. I think it's today's Aquina shop. There, The hot dogs and the chowder were a part of many travelers' must-have summer foods. I remember the hot dogs forever, um, with the lovely toasted New England buns and the buttery flavor of the hot dog. But the thing that was amazing was there were also those souvenirs that I talked about, the little glass jars of sand, the ashtrays, all of them souvenirs of a spot on the island that is indeed sacred, that we now know is the spot most beloved by Moshep. Inappropriate bathing dress is not something that's simply a part of the 21st century, as this card proves. If we look at the back of these bathers from probably the early 1900s, we can see that they are vacation frolickers. And the caption simply says, we are going to Oak Bluffs Beach, Cottage City, Massachusetts. They came then 
and they still come now to celebrate and enjoy the island that I so dearly love and that I hope you love too. Wish you were here. <laughs>